Hey, everybody. This is Craig Garber. Welcome to Everyone Loves Guitar. Uh, we've got a repeat guest, one of the, literally the most talented guitar players that uh, you'll ever find with the one and only Mike Dawes, live to you from England. I cannot believe uh, this. I sound like an old man, but this is it's like you're across the desk. The, everything is so clean. The sound, the picture, man, it just blows my mind. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, DSLR yeah. vibes. Hello, yeah, there so, you go. <laughs> Sony, Sony. That's my weird fingernails there. And also, uh, for, for the benefit of people listening via audio only, I blew a rasp earlier like this i didn't actually break wind um while you were talking there just in case anyone's curious um, hey it doesn't make me. you a bad person <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm english we have to explain ourselves on every occasion it's a pleasure to be be back here man thanks for having me back it was so, uh, so fun last time it's always good to talk to you man uh i just want to let people know a couple of things number one mike's was on the show quite a while back so we're going to put his original interview at the tail end of this definitely on audio i don't remember if we recorded video last time if it is it'll be on the video as well also make sure you go to everyone loves guitar.com forward slash subscribe to subscribe to the audio and video of the show if you're watching this on youtube hit the subscribe button and the little icon it looks like a bell that helps us out a lot with the uh, youtube algorithms and thank you all righty mike dawes english fingerstyle guitar player known for composing arranging and performing multiple parts simultaneously on one instrument using unique techniques let me just tell you this guy's like a band in himself. He's so talented. I'm not saying that to blow smoke. He's really, really talented. And he's so cool up on stage. And he's such a good performer, man. He interacts with the audience so well. Uh, he just releases, or his third album is coming out like right after this, a few days after this interview. Um, it's called Shows and Distancing Live in the USA. Mike's been named best acoustic guitarist in the world by Music Radar and Total Guitar. Very well deserved. He's toured the world both as a solo act with uh, also with the International Guitar Night Tour with um, Kimo West, Ali, I'm going to screw up his last name. Oh, yeah, this last one. So he was finished. O Oli Soikili. Yeah, and uh, Jenk. Well, it's Jenk. Jenk, yeah. Jenk, sorry. Yeah. Jenk Erdogan. Yeah. Erdogan. yeah, I have those two guys coming on my show. I have to get, oh, okay, <laughs> I, have to understand. I have to get their names now. Oh, I should have, I should have pranked you. I should have told them it was, it was different. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, uh, it, yeah, they're great guys. And he's also Justin Hayward from the Moody Blues uh, lead guitar player. And like I said, I've told him this before. And again, I don't want to embarrass him. He is so together for a young guy. I mean, he is... This guy is a total professional in everything he does. He's really smart. He's very kind. And he's just totally together, man. And I really have tons of respect for him. So thank you, Mike. Thanks for coming Aww. back on the show. You're, you're sweet. You should do more introductions for me. For <laughs> man, take me around. I'll go on a world tour with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that'd that be nice right now, wouldn't it? That'd be I know. nice. <laughs> it sure would, man. Uh, so last time we spoke, I remember congratulating you. You, you. you bought a new home back in England. I think this is on social media. And then the next day, COVID shut the world down. So I was just curious, how's things going in general? And like, how's England doing? I know they're having a second wave. Yeah. So, so I've done a few podcasts, to, uh, you know, sort of talking about this record. And, and a lot of the hosts were sort of saying that out of all the people they've interviewed or the musicians during the COVID thing, I kind of really got quite a short end of the stick compared to other people um, simply because of a perfect storm of, of unfortunate events. However, I want to underscore the fact that I do have a house and I'm incredibly fortunate and one of the lucky ones and I got my health, etc. But what happened basically was, uh, you know, I, I toured around the world for years and years, uh, sort of living a, the troubadour lifestyle to save, to, to kind of put everything into this, this property um and and the timing of it worked out that you know okay well you know i'm gonna be you know short for cash relatively in the short term but i'm going straight back on tour blah 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 blah. so obviously that didn't happen so i spent a while sort of without any furniture but that wasn't because i didn't keep the capital back for, for basic things like that what happened is that a lot of the capital that i kept back was in a company i'm being super candid um, was in a company that, let's just say, was negatively affected by the COVID situation oh, and it's locked away and I still to this day can't access it. So I, I'm in this weird situation where I'm in this new town, can't see my friends, can't make any buddies in this new town because lots of, you know, when you live the touring lifestyle, your, your buddies are overseas or, you know, all over the place. I'm used to traveling. I'm used to driving two or three hours to see a buddy. You know, that's sure. just kind of who I am. And, um, 
Uh, and then not only that, but my girlfriend was just about to graduate with a master's in aerospace engineering. And we live in Bristol, which is the UK home of aerospace. And obviously that industry has gone kaput as well. Yeah. So, you know, I've, I've definitely gone from a carefree lifestyle into a right. OK, let's uh, figure out what's going to happen now. So uh, that's what led in part to the, to, the, to the live project, not because I hadn't intended on doing it anyway. I'd already recorded the stuff and I was planning on releasing it this year. But um, it added this extra layer of emotion into the project of, oh, my God, like this is what I love. This is what I can't do. It's, so, I, so I decided to re-edit the songs to include the banter and include the humor and include all the things that you miss from a show. You know, I'm going to be doing a streaming show on November the 1st. That's the one thing awesome. I'm doing this year. But yeah, but, but that connection, I wanted to, the audience connection is so special to me and I wanted to capture that on the record. So, so yeah, I, I, I taught myself how to edit video, taught myself how to do a lot of the stuff that I'd, I'd relied on third parties for. Uh, use the opportunity to to, to learn uh, the skills uh, that I, you know, just to try and cut down on middlemen and also just grow my own abilities as a content creator. So sure. as you can, anyone looking on the video side of things can see, I've got the DSLR, I've got the studio, all of this was my, my, my project and it's still yeah. a work in progress. You know, I've got to put a plant there. I've got to do this and that. What, but, uh, what, is, what is that thing on your left? Is, is that my, a speaker? My left is, is, is that or yeah, my, left. my left. Yeah. So you're talking about this. So this is an amp that's by Hughes and Kettner. Um, and it's that I've got it there. They they gave it to me because it's got. Oh, you're looking at that side, or no, no, no. You're. It's like an oval thing, like a beaming oh, out to that. Mars. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh no, oh no, that's just a fan. Oh, I'm like, wow, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah. So so this. Oh, it's like this, a Dyson. That's like a Dyson it, fan. It, yeah. Which which was made and in this town in Bristol. Well, Bristol's where a lot of the Dyson. Um, Oh, that's Engineers interesting. Were, until, you know, that we got the whole Brexit thing coming up. So he's fucked off to Singapore. But, <laughs> you know, because, you know, like, you know, I'm on a sinking ship here, Craig. But, you know, it's pretty crazy all over the world right now. So, again, yeah. it's, hard, it's hard to complain. But it's certainly been a transition. And, yeah. you know, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to have human contact with you. And that's why I'm, I'm talking so much because you're the first person I've talked to, to for a while. So, hey, Craig, <laughs> how's it going? <laughs> Um, well, congrats. Also, you didn't have that. I don't, I think you didn't have that same girlfriend or you didn't have a relationship. So congratulations. I don't think you were dating when I think, so. I think, I think uh, well, maybe you were, but she was on, it was still in that. We can't yeah, discuss it yeah. publicly phase. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, well, you know what? I was still touring. So what yeah. that means is, you know, I would, I would come back and we see each other for like a week and then I go away. And that's now it's been nice to spend that's been a silver lining to be able that's to spend cool, time man. together and, and actually do things because she's only just finished uh, her her hardcore university stuff so she's got free time as well but now we're you know looking at okay well well what's next i can't tour she obviously there's no aerospace industry so you know it's 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 an interesting time but you know we just hope that you know th this this thing is over as quickly as possible and uh and those we love are safe and you know the, the fallout isn't isn't too major we just got to keep keep gigs in the diary and hope they happen and right now know, april man. may is the april may is what we're shooting for with justin and and then my solo stuff after that presuming that happens and if if we have to move the dates again we have to move the dates and i just want to give a shout out to the uh the people, uh, the, the the audiences of all artists and fans of all artists for being patient with people like us because it's uh, it's not you know it's never easy cancelling a gig so we appreciate the understanding that you know you buying tickets to things that may not happen is is the reason that they would happen again if they don't happen yeah. because the promoters get to know that there's an interest and you will if it doesn't happen you get your refund or it'll still be valid sure. i would certainly urge audiences to continue supporting the live end because that will help it get get back on its feet uh, as aside from the uh, the, the disease, the end of times plague that we have as well, or whatever it is. Know, so, uh, yeah, crazy. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, man. I'm always good. No, no complaints. You know, my kids are down happy. in the sun. Everything's down cool. in the sun. Yeah, I mean, I'm sitting here, and you know, I'm not in an apartment in New York with young kids, so you know, I have a lot to be grateful for. That's maybe. another thing, man. It's... Like, like you know, there's people out there in these high-rise buildings, you know, with their families, and and, and maybe they the kids can't go to school or whatever. It's it's a crazy time, but you know. If you're listening to this, you clearly love guitar. So, uh, you know, we, we, we got our guitars. As you can see, I got my weird little yeah, my weird thing there and my, my couldn't see there. And 
I love your studio. Awesome. It's, it's very cool. It's like a, you should have drinks in there. I, I, I need to get a little fridge just down here. Yeah. A bar for when you're finished. Yeah. I mean, I don't have the, the it's, it's a city house. So I don't know if I could, I, I do have another bedroom, which currently is just boxes. Cause again, the moving <laughs> process hasn't really c completed. It, right. it hasn't been a, a, an easy transition. Again, being a first home, trying to get furniture at a time where all the furniture stores are closed and the supply mm -hmm. chains all buggered up. But um, yeah, uh, a bar. I'll take your suggestion to heart. I bought an arcade machine. I see. Was that. That, is that the, is that that down on the floor? Yeah, there? yeah. It, it's down there because I was doing a little little video for it, um, and you know, obviously, that's not where I put it. I put it upstairs on the bar surface. But um, it's yeah, like man. a legit oh, machine dude. from Japan. Dude, well, it's not from Japan, it's from Italy, but they put a little bit of Japanese text on it. Makes it look uh, edgy. okay. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, you know, all, all, all the old arcade games, but then all the way through to, you know, Super Nintendo, Sega, PS2, N64, you know, uh, Donkey Kong, where, all that. Where did you, great. you know what, man? I'm going to make a note. I'm going to find out where you got that. <laughs> that was, that'd be like a great gift for my kids. Man, well, uh, I, I, it's called Tiny Arcade. Uh, and I believe the website, if you Google Tiny Arcade, it's something like Tiny Arcade Machines or, or something like that is, is the URL. But it's a guy called Gabriel who makes them. They're essentially PCs with okay. 45, uh, about, I, I forget if it's 4,500 or 45,000 games. Like no. an obscene, oh dude, more games that I'm ever going to get to play in my life. It's basically every game ever up until like the PS2, Nintendo, Wii stuff where there's only a few titles, but there are good ones um but then uh yeah and then and then obviously the box and the casing and everything is is all the vintage arcade components and then there's you know a full sound system in the front where you can mix the treble and the bass and the volume and then there's usb ports for external controllers to play the, the oh games my where God. You have two sticks and then there's an hdmi out if you want to stream with it and yeah my, my girlfriend and i have been playing super mario world on it uh, together which has been fun that's pretty cool man Right this on. is the most guitar-y podcast ever. <laughs> <laughs> um, how, how's, what, and I got to ask you one Brexit question just because you're there. Mm. Have there been any sort of like visible changes since the separation? Well, we haven't actually separated yet. The, 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 the actual, so it's, it's really complicated to follow because there was a date where there was the vote. Then there was like another vote. And then there was like the day where, it was like officially that we were going to do it. Everything was signed. We, there's no going back. And then there's the actual like day where it happens, which is actually going to be January. Okay. So, January so 20, we're, we're, we're in, we're in the phase where the government is supposed to be actually drawing up all these new agreements and, 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 you know, because it's past the point of no return Yeah. and then COVID happened. And, you know, I mean, you know, I, I don't tend to get too political, but I will say that I think it's a terrible idea and it's made all the worse because of COVID yeah. because in the short term, it's definitely going to be economically negative. I mean, just talking about the economics, it's yeah. going to be economically negative. And right now we are devastated economically because of COVID. So, yeah. I mean, anyone with logical common sense would just say, okay, well, maybe this isn't the best thing to do right now, even if you're a staunch Brexiteer, which I'm not. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, um, I don't see how anyone can look at January and think things are going to get better. I think we're heading for a bad time over here. And, you know, we'll see what happens to my friends in the US, you know, because it's, it's just turmoil over there as well. We're, we're very closely related, the UK and the US. We just, we're going through this kind of, troublesome time you know uh and, and and hopefully you know like I, i've been spending a lot less time on facebook that's that's a good thing um, Dude, that is so healthy <laughs> it's a dumpster fire man it's, it's, it's just, an absolute dumpster fire it's just so toxic there man yeah so so things like this like talking to other musicians and just playing music going for walks you know talking to your friends on the phone i'm a big yeah. phoner like i love just picking up the phone and talking to people as a human um yeah yeah you know, there's that. But the, the, the Brexit thing is just, it, it's weird. I was so against it and I am against it. But because of COVID, it's kind of put that in perspective. Like, I don't see any reason that Brexit is going to be worse than COVID. You know what I mean? It, you know what I mean? It's like, so okay. You get a relative perspective to maybe make it look not so bad now. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's like, I don't know. Um, it's like, say Brexit would have been like forcing me to bite my fingers off. It's like COVID's already bitten my hand off. So I'm kind of just like, well, yeah. have, a, ha, have a gnaw on the stump. 
but yeah. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Like, who cares about this bit? Like, you know, take it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah. Most musicians I've talked to are really against it. Like h- hardcore. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's dumb. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, again, I, I, there's people from different walks of life who will have different things to lose and gain. From the selfish point of view, it's going to negatively impact all my European touring, my European merch sales, my way to monetize being in Europe, but also the amount of friends I have who are Europeans living in the UK. My ex-girlfriend, for example, is is leaving the UK at the end of the month. My another friend has been has ditched the UK to go to Switzerland. Like lots of people have just why is it, why um, is that? Um, actually he's a guitar player who you might have had on the podcast, but I'm not going to mention his name. Um, but his girlfriend or, or fiance, um, is an economist in Switzerland and she's very, very intelligent and is looking at, you know, she works for one of the major firms that, that has the knowledge. Right. And, um, from what he and her relayed to me is that best case scenario, and this is pre COVID best case scenario. Uh, she's saying that, our economy is going to sort of shrink to a level it was about 30 years ago. Uh, and, that, and that's, and that's with a deal, which, which that's a, that's with a deal. And we don't even have a deal yet. And that's pre COVID. And just, you know, it's, you can roll the dice and hope for the best, but, or if you're in a position to move overseas, it's like a, a lot of people are leaving the U S for places like, I know a lot of people leaving for Canada and things for their own reasons, but it's, it all boils down to the same thing. Turmoil, fear anxiety of not knowing what the near future is going to bring maybe they they have certainty over here and uncertainty over here maybe they they want certainty for their kids or for their job it it all comes down to that and and it's just it's rattling a cage that in my opinion uh doesn't need to be rattled when you look at the benefits that the cage brings but obviously when the media get a hold of it they 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 spin what they want to spin and and, and people vote for for whatever they're told for it's 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 a universal thing isn't it yeah but um yeah i I, i'm against it for selfish reasons and also for moral ethical and economic reasons yeah uh, basically but 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 that's just me and and that's me from my perspective and it's important that we we bridge this divide that we have between us in society and we we accept that hey that's my point of view what's yours let's discuss let's let's have a dialogue that's so important or even if you yeah. don't discuss just like that's it it's none of your business what someone else thinks i mean to be that's, honest yeah, whatever yeah. i mean you know no matter how right you think it is it's yeah you know it's it's just uh, like codependency or i don't know what the hell it is like everybody's in, you know, like you know it's it's okay to have you know it's okay to have different point of views on things because we have different experiences but yeah i mean if you're a traveling musician and suddenly now you're going to need a potent, potentially um a new visa for each individual european country and, and have to deal with shit yeah that hasn't even been worked out yet I, I mean i have a friend in agriculture and there's things like she's saying the whole thing's a disaster she's working within the government on the agricultural side of the brexit negotiations i won't name her name she's a friend of my girlfriend's um but you know it's like okay well on this date we're gonna there's gonna be this many hundreds of thousands of lambs just being born usually they are then exported to europe now they're not so what's the effects on biodiversity in yorkshire you know like there's so so many things that people don't think about and the things that yeah uh, you know what i mean i can talk about brexit for days but if you're if you're listening and you think i'm just some kind of long-haired hippie guy in bristol trust me i accept that you know okay you 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 have you have your reasons for things and i have mine i like to travel and see my friends and and hopefully make what is left of a living in the music industry that we can do in a time of covid especially where 85% 85% of, of my income as a touring musician has just been evaporated. So, you know, it's, it's it definitely a, a, a crazy time to be in the touring industry. I mean, I just feel wow. for the crews. I feel for the crews, man. Like the, the, oh. the, the musicians, we can, we can do things like Patreon and, you know, we can get by with, with streams and things, but, but, you know, the guitar techs, the, the events, the PA companies, you know, yeah. these guys with million dollar leases on PA equipment that no one's hiring, but the bank isn't going to give them a break. Those are the people that are, are suffering. Yeah. yeah holy hey shit. guys welcome welcome to the podcast <laughs> <laughs> i didn't realize you'd need separate visa now because that's an arm and a leg just for yeah well to get well, well yeah. We, no nobody knows what the process is going to be but there's no mm. th- right now because there isn't a deal i, I think what they're probably going to do is have some kind of like visa where it's like for, for the schengen zone you you pay x amount a year and you get a pass for all of these different countries or something like yeah, a stamp in your passport that gets you into france germany italy whatever yeah but um but but the thing is we just don't know and it's rattling the cage to find out you know we could get a bad deal we can get a good deal but i mean 
It was in the news recently, uh, hurrah, the UK government just negotiated a trade deal with Japan. It's like, mate, the European Union already had a trade deal with Japan. Like, you've cut off your arm and it's like, hurrah, we've got a bionic arm. Look how great yeah, we are. So, yeah, dude, okay. just don't cut off your arm in the first place. <laughs> you've got a perfectly good arm. God, My analogies sorry, are really arm related. I noticed that. You have an arm, it's like a childhood trauma with your arm, maybe? Or <laughs> I did cut my finger off. You did? Yeah, this finger's sewn on. That. Yeah, Is for it real. really? Yeah, so, so my third finger on my, my fretting hand, uh, I cut it off in a door. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it, got, it got sewn back on and, and I have limited nerve feeling in it. So that's the shred finger. <laughs> yeah that is a shred finger yeah what's up with that but wow. i must say dude let's like like the brexit thing is just me on coffee talking about politics. No, that's that's not what we're here for and again if you're listening and you disagree with everything i'm saying that's fine that's totally okay. you're you're an awesome person and i love you <laughs> let's have a all right shows and distancing what are some of these tracks like social they're not social distancing shows are they no so well shows and distancing obviously a play on on social distancing but the tracks were recorded most of the album was recorded last year um in october and november i recorded two shows one of them was in new york opening for justin paywood and uh one of them was also opening for justin it was the last show of the tour and it was in florida and little did we know that that was the last time that we'd see each other because of covid where was that um, in, where was that in miami Mel melbourne florida yeah because you were supposed to come here like right afterwards i had it on my calendar yeah i remember that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so that was the king center in melbourne so that makes up about two-thirds okay. of the record but then there was also a cut from nam the nam show that year i did a uh, i did a track with quist do you know Chris? right yeah i, had yeah. Quist. I think quist is the one who connected us Oh, right, right on. I think yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was gonna, yeah, he's on uh, Meta the one, the, the Metallica cover. Where was that recorded? That was at that, NAMM. That was, yeah. So it was basically, oh, okay. well, well, during NAMM, I was, um, I was staying in an Airbnb with the guys from Periphery. It was their Airbnb. They just let me crash. Um, but Quist's Danish buddy, Thomas Johansson, has a studio called Strawhall Studio. Amazing place. And he just says, dude, like, you know, we're hung over after now. Like, come to the studio. We'll put a mic up and just, just go with it. I've been listening to your arrangement. Let's just do a take and see what happens. And it was so fun and so honest and raw and wicked. And it turned out so good. I had to put it on the album. So it's, cool. not, it's not live in front of an audience. That's the one track that I say is live in the studio. Right. But I say that because it was that energy. It's not it wasn't intended to be on a record initially. We were just seeing what happened. And what happened was just this loose post nam joy of jamming. We're musicians. We're tired of the, all the talking all weekend. We just want to play. And it turned out so good. There was actually another track recorded that day that he's going to release as part of one of his projects at some point. Oh, so that's cool. I won't spoil that. And then the other the final three tracks on the record are taken from my first ever headline show in the USA. Um, really where was that yeah that was at the iridium in new york city well there's two from that and one from a, another track another venue on that tour but it was um the first time that i was able to come to america and say this is the mike door show and it was a packed room on a monday night in new york off times square and such a special memory for me so two of the tracks i think a stevie wonder cover and a david getter cover they're uh, from That's that so it's this, cool this punk rock vibe you know so we've got the polished production live recordings with Justin. We've got the pure energy of my jam with Quist, and then we've got the punk rock club vibe of the Iridium. So uh, all of it just came together to make this retrospective into the old world, the world before COVID, you know? Right, right, right. And um, it's just a beautiful thing I'm very proud of, and I'm super proud of the takes, which is a very rare thing for a very critical musician of his own work. Um, and uh, yeah, and I can't wait to release it. So it'll be out in a few days, right? The 30th, um, there's pre-orders still up for a few days at a reduced price. And then the live streaming concert, which I'm doing is part of it on the 1st of November as well, which you That's can get awesome, man. tickets for or visit or whatever. Yeah. Um, how did you like the Iridium? Oh, it's great. I mean, it's historic. It's Les Paul's place, right? Yeah, I've been there um, a couple so, of times. Yeah, so time. I did, they had me play... I want to say three times, maybe two times I was in town. I was in town with Justin and I think one of the bookers was just at the show because he was a Moody Blues fan. And then he was like, dude, because oh, I opened the shows with Justin. So yeah. he saw my solo set. He was like, dude, you need to come play at the Iridium. So we got that happening. And and unfortunately it was, it was a success. And then they asked me back a couple more times. The, the first time, 
Now, the second time, I think, was a co-headline with Trevor Gordon Hall, amazing fingerstyle guitar player. But that's, uh, we did a co-headline, first of all, because we wanted to make it a co-headline. But second of all, I was, I was banned from doing headlines because my visa status at the time. Um, just not banned, as in I didn't have the paperwork to be the name at the top. And that's, that's so, so that we made it a duo show. Although that's just- You can come great. here and earn money, but if you earn too much money, we get some. <laughs> oh, 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 no. I mean, that, that, that side of things was, Holy I shit. mean, it's just a different, a different piece of paperwork that costs more money to be a headliner. So that's why I do a lot of work with Justin. As the yeah, sport. that makes a ton of sense. Yeah, so, so a lot of that's very easier on that front. But no, in terms of the IRS taking their share, I mean, I'm, they, they take a lot. I mean, the, the, first of all, they take 30% of everything you earn ever that's if you're on stage. That's right. withholding. But then on top of that, they take, um, so this last tour that we did, they wanted to take, they wanted to tax the individual guitar players because there were four of us on this lineup, Oli and Jenk included, who you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, and they wanted to tax each individual musician $1 per seat of, the ven of each venue, regardless of whether that seat was filled or not, on their merchandise sales. Wait so a minute. That's not on even, top, so, so they're taxing the you money on income, not even relative to income earned. Yeah. But how about, so, was that chemo too? He's a U.S. citizen. No, because he was a U.S. citizen. Oh. So, so there were ways, we, so we, he, he was fine. And all the Good withholding Lord, tax, man. the foreigners we got, there were, were ways around it. And, and the, um, the company we worked with, uh, CWA Management Fuck. down in Florida, were really good at helping us. So there were... There were certain things we could do, obviously legally, um, but certain things we could do to mitigate some of these upfront costs. But, you know, for example, next year, I'm going to be paying for that then. You know what I mean? Um, so some of it's, yeah. It, it's, I mean, have I they mean, looked on the list of like, earn who earns money? Like musicians are usually not at the top. I mean, but no, no, but, but so, so, uh, I, I must say as a disclaimer, that's the default tax system unless you pay a lot of money to have a company take you into a per earnings tax system with more paperwork. You know what I mean? That's it's like hard, by, by default, they charge yeah. you a load and then you can get it down a bit. But there's other stuff as well. Like, you know, I'm paying tax on that in the UK as well. So <laughs> there's, there's a discrepancy, my tax earnings versus the, what I do in the US there's part of that that just goes because you can only claim back so much and it's, and then you have to have accountants in different countries to handle it. And that's a cost. This is like a real deep kind of business and politics podcast you've got here, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just shocked. I cannot believe. I mean, the, 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 the machinations you have to yeah, go through the, here. As a foreigner working in the U S and by the way, um, president Trump made it harder. So there was a, a thing that he, he passed, um, which, there was an exemption up to a point and he got rid of that. So one year I, that he charged, that I got charged an extra four grand. And that was just because like, you know an what? Like, yeah, exactly. An exemption was gone. So things like that. And there's a lot more to touring in the U S as a foreigner than people think, which is why if you've ever, if you're listening and you've ever gone to a show as an audience member and bought merch from the merch table or just gone to the show, that matters so much to yeah. foreign musicians in the States. Like you have no idea the merch, it, the gig fees usually all go to the tax man or, or your expenses. And some of the merch goes to the tax man, but whilst people are still buying CDs and shirts and things, you know, that is the earnings that we bring back basically. Yeah. So it's, um, everyone does it differently, you know, but, um, and there's, you know, different States have different extra state taxes and things. Right. And, and you know how it is in the States, like it's, yeah. um, each state's a bit different, but you know, I really can't stress enough how, you know, when you go to a show and you pay your ticket fee and you buy your merch and you think, maybe you're thinking, Oh, those t-shirts are expensive. Trust me when I say the artist isn't getting that they're getting maybe a, you know, a, a small chunk of that, but a lot of it's going to the house. So house commissions, for example, so the, the venues, some of the venues we were playing, they wanted like 35% of your merch just at the house for the privilege of being allowed to sell. That's wow. In you, addition you know to I mean? your, they're taking, uh, you know, seats. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> taking, so, so, taking, so, so the, the, the tax on the seats is relative to your tax rate. So say you're doing a thousand seat room and even, regardless of how many uh, tickets you sell, okay, I'm just picking arbitrary numbers. 
but they will tax you, they won't tax you a dollar per seat as in you get a thousand dollars on your merch, but you'll get your tax rate on that merch. So say if your tax rate's 30%, $300 comes off your merch before anything. Then right. say 30% or 20% or whatever the deal is goes to the house, then maybe you've got to pay the state tax at source. That sometimes happens in some, some venues and some yeah. promoters and things like that. Then you've got the expenses, the record label, the, the manufacturers. So I, I've built this system. You mentioned very kindly earlier that I've, you say I've got my shit together. No, um, you do. Well, one of the things that I, I would admit to having together is getting rid of as many costs as possible when it comes to traveling with merch. So I'm bringing my merch in my sound hole. I'm bringing my merch in my jacket pockets and in my suitcase. And then I have a relationship with various merch companies in various states who okay. will supply, you know, so postage is mitigated. I have my manager is now, is, my new manager is based in Nashville. So there's a base there where all the tour at the end of the, all the stock at the end of the tour goes to Nashville to a lockup instead of, you know, having to be paid to ship be it back to England, yeah, which you're going to pay customs on. Obviously, yeah. there's customs costs when you bring things in. I get things manufactured in the US because, you know, if you have it in the, made in the UK, if they get you with customs, then, you know, so there's there's all that kind of stuff. I'm pretty proud of the merch game, but um, the another thing is taking card payments. If you're not a US citizen, you're not allowed to take card payments. It literally geotags your phone or your device, and it's like, yeah, you can't do it. So I have to have a merch company in San Francisco that I promise to always make my, my uh, exclusive supplier of t-shirts if they supply a card reader and their account details. So they, oh, they, they can, it just comes out of a San Francisco hub. Exactly. So it goes to them and then I invoice them and they take their cut from that for the privilege and obviously the taxes and stuff. So there's a lot of stuff to learn. And, and when you're just to being an independent musician, you don't just get on a plane and do a show. You have to learn all this and, and you learn on the job. And, and, you know, Jenk, who you will talk to, he, you know, didn't know about some of these taxes that he had to pay, being, you know, because just because he was from Turkey, there was some sure. extra hoops he had to jump through. And, and, you know, you look at the numbers and you're thinking, I'm out here doing 33 shows over two months. And let's really break down what the profit margin is here, you know, and it starts to, okay, well, this comes off to this guy, this comes off to this guy, and it gets, gets a bit scary. So if you're a fan and you buy a CD at a show, you are the best. It's, it's, it's the only way the shows can happen, okay? So we appreciate you and we love you. Well, man, and you're super, you're very good about your banter. A lot of, you know, the humility you have and the gratitude always comes through, man. Oh, thanks. Well, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, because it, well, it's sincere. No, I know it's sincere, but now I understand a, a little more why. What, where did you get, uh, you're also pretty funny on stage, which is, which is really <laughs> cool. Where did you, um, like, how did you develop that? Were you always like that? You've been touring so long since you were very young. Um, I mean, I, I've given that some thought because it's a question I've been asked a lot. So the stage persona is just me. That's the only way I can really explain it is that I'm not trying to put on an act. I'm just a weird guy. And on top of that, um, I grew up cutting my teeth in the open mic night circuit playing bars around the UK. And oh. when you're in that situation, having a banter with the drunk guy at the back of the room, if you don't do that, then you just can't do it. So yeah. you learn to sort of, I think you learn to be one of them in the sense that you create an environment, excuse me, hiccups. Um, you create an environment where the guy, the drunk guy at the back of the room is like, Oh, that guy looks like a good hang or whatever. You know, you're not trying right. to present this air of professionalism because you're just playing in a bar with some right. drunk guys. Right. And I think when you translate that to a theater or something like that, especially when you have an English accent and you're in say the States, there's this air of sort of just, just cheeky chappy, you know, it, it, and it is who I am, but it works particularly well in the States because I think, I think in the U S also, when you look at comedy as, a, as, as British comedy versus American comedy, <laughs> I, I, I saw Stephen Fry do a, uh, uh, put this quite eloquently. British comedy it, it works because the people are laughing at themselves. So an American comedy historically was almost like, you know, the protagonist was the hero. I think right. Stephen Fry's analogy was, I can't remember which, uh, which actor it was on which show, but say the thing that was funny was the guy 
slapping a mop out of someone's hand and that was funny whereas if that was a british version the comedian would be the guy holding the mop you know what That's i mean it. yeah like yeah, yeah. like but but with things like curb your enthusiasm and and, and and the american office things like that your humor at it, it culturally has has evolved into there is this this kind of symbiosis with British comedy now where yeah, yeah. You, can, you can be a bit of a geezer on stage and sort of say self-depreciating things, but it translates actually very well to an American audience now. And I think that's because of the English culture they've absorbed, just the hypothesis, the British culture that they've absorbed uh, growing up as well. I think that that helps. In Man, China, so in much... China, it doesn't work. It, like, you know, like my stage routine <laughs> in China is just horrific, you know. Like you can't, can you say much there or? No, because you have a translator. So even oh, if you tell a, even if you yeah. tell a joke, it, 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 it doesn't work. I love playing in China, but it's hard. Yeah. It's so hard for me because, you know, usually when I'm changing tunings between a song, I've got an anecdote or, or, or we're just bantering, but obviously there's no bantering because they're not speaking English. And so it's, it's kind of stoic a little bit for you. It's, it's more tame. Yeah. yeah, interesting. I mean, v visually, you can do the you can do visual gags, but again, like you know, I I I'm a guitar player. The music is is at the forefront, but the banter is usually a nice way to fill the space when you're tuning up between the songs. And when well, you're and, also uh, you know. the, the sorry, let me cut you off. Go ahead, Mark. No, dude. The way you do it, it's very comforting because, like, it's I always I think a performance is kind of like, you know, it's like a doctor with good bedside manner. If you have a doctor with good bedside manner, you just feel safer. And when you have, when the way you do it, it you just feel like, okay, this guy's got this under control. It's a, it, you know, it's a warm feeling. Like you know, it's good being here. He's, you know, it, part of the freedom for going to show to me anyway is I don't have to be responsible for ninety minutes. I don't have to think about work. I don't have to think about responsibility. And when you have someone like yourself that sort of like says, I'm going to assume the responsibility for this and make sure you have fun. That's comforting as an audience member to me. Oh, that's, that's nice to hear. Yeah. I, I just had a chat with a musician friend of mine who, who plays in a style where the mood and the vibe is, is very paramount. And it's always like music first and, and, and the banter is almost, can almost take you out of that. And for his style, that totally makes sense. Hmm. But for, for for what I'm doing, my the style of the show, there are visual elements, there are sonic elements, but but there's also comedic elements. There just has to be. I mean, I'm standing on stage playing a guitar like an idiot, like I'm an idiot, and I do weird stuff on the guitar. It's like objectively, if you were an alien who <laughs> was like, like <laughs> Russell Brand, Brand when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like. You know what I mean? Like, so if if you were, say, frozen in time and, say, from the 60s and woke up and went into a room and you saw yeah. this style of guitar, you'd be like, what? Well, That's yeah. mental. Like, so yeah. so it, it's it's just an unusual thing at its core. So I think also the banter is is disarming for me because standing yes. up stage by yourself is very scary. And, if, and I'm not putting on an act. It is just genuinely who I am as a person. And I think doing that is the easiest thing in the world to make yourself feel comfortable on stage. That's, you know, well, that's if, great that you're smart enough to take care of yourself. Then it happens to be a win for the audience. Well, I think, I think it would be a win for any, like I don't see any instances unless you're an asshole, like where that wouldn't be a win, you know, even if you're just a really emotional kind of just stoic dude by being that on stage, that's who you are. And that's what your act is. That's what your right. show is. So, um, you know, for example, I've played with guitar players who just polite, thank you very much. Um, I don't speak much English. I hope you enjoy this sincerely. I'm so grateful to be here in America. Uh, thank you. That's genuinely who they are. And then they play and they make you cry and the whole place is on their feet. You know, sure. they're, they're not telling jokes. That's not who they are. But it's that sincerity. Like, as long as sincerity comes across, then I think it's easier for an audience to, like you say, forget your problems and just be absorbed in the moment. Yeah. And, which uh, wonderful <laughs> yeah. well yeah yeah i mean it's 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 part of the job but it's also cathartic for people like myself because we get to just sort of indulge in self-expression and have fun and, and and i really miss that and and not only was it you know my primary source of income by far it was just the way i've lived my life it was my lifestyle for for eight years in a row so being here stuck now although on the face of it you know there's a house there's creature comforts i can go and get a coffee if i want whatever 
it's just psychologically is crazy, man. Because some days you're just like, like it, it, it's it's like a whole. It's like being born again. There's the, the touring when you're touring eleven months of the year. It's not just like oh, I miss touring. It's like that lifestyle doesn't yeah. exist now. So it, it's like I, I I can't explain it, and you certainly can't explain it to people that have never lived on the road like that. You know, it, and and it's certainly you certainly can't explain it to people that have never been on tour or aren't musicians because they just think you're moaning. You know, um, it's really hard to psychologically deal with this transition, and and. I've been calling a lot of other musicians and we're having the same conversation, just like, well, and especially when you have a government that doesn't give a shit about you and doesn't even help you out. I mean, I haven't received well, that, a penny from my government, you know, that a penny. Is, you know what, man, that is really disappointing. Cause like my, uh, Anne's brother-in-law or something was furloughed and, and he was getting almost his full salary. Yeah. So well, I just I, assumed England would be, so it's 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 a technicality basically so because i'm self-employed but i don't uh own my own company right on pay on paperwork i'm a sole trader i'm not a I, i'm not an ltd yeah uh, if i was an ltd then i would pay me 80 yeah. percent of my salary and that would be right. fine and the government would pay for that but it was oh a technicality be, be, before covid i am just a individual sole proprietor earning, what they call it I, i'm yeah i'm an individual earning x right and that x made me ineligible for anything but if i was an employee of my own company earning sure. x then i'd be eligible for you know and, yeah. and i and look i i i don't scrounge off the government i pay a, a ton of tax i've never asked for anything in my life yeah, but it yeah. is it is disappointing that many freelancers are in this situation well, but because again, the government shut you down it's not like you said hey man we're fucking not working well it's it, dude it's 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 something that has to be done like yeah. like i'm not i'm not going to stand in a room trying to sell a public gathering to people that could be vulnerable to getting sick like i'm not going to do that anyway right it's the right. situation i'm not i'm not I'm not blaming the government for shutting down shows. It's just, that's just the situation. But it would be nice if, if the, the, I think in the UK, it's about a million people in, in my situation, including, you know, uh, actors, people in that yeah. kind of profession. Um, we've slipped through, just slipped through the cracks. I think, you know, maybe it'll catch up. But uh, the point is, going back to what I was saying earlier, it's, it's been a transition, but there's so much to be grateful for. It's, it's, you know, I'm hoping that maybe people listening to this are getting some awareness and perhaps if they have a musician friend or a freelancer friend yeah. that they haven't spoken to in a while, maybe check in on them. Yeah, you know? totally. Because it's, 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 we are the, the sort of, well, I don't, that, that sounds weird to say, we're the forgotten ones because everyone's in this crazy situation, as I say, but it is, it is a crazy time. It's a crazy time. Yeah, sure. it really is, man. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Back to but you. Again, yeah. All, all, dude, I've got guitars. I've got, you know, we're talking, we're doing shit. It's great. <laughs> the, uh, you had mentioned about that. There's so much Americans now have been, there's so much, Brit, uh, you know, there's so much British TV here now. I mean, oh, tons cool. of it. And we, oh, I'm, it's your yeah, Britbox, right? Is it called Britbox? It was really funny. It's, yeah, you know, it's funny. The other night, we always watch like, uh, you guys make some great police mysteries and mur you know just mysteries oh and yeah, 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 yeah. i mean tons of good shows and i don't watch much tv in general i like documentaries i'm not a tv guy but i like watching the british stuff the, the series and so the other night in we were watching something she goes oh my god brit box she goes i want to get it i'm like yeah get it you know <laughs> she was so excited to get because she's on this forum like brits in florida or brits and whatever and they all oh, talk yeah. about brit box so she was like so excited to have it and now we get what, what what are you watching then like what's uh what's um, the current the current vibe? what are we watching i don't know the name of the show i'm but all i know is but one bad thing about like they have a lot of scottish shows i can't oh, yeah. understand a fucking thing those guys are saying like if there's one scottish guy you manage to you could contextually fill in the blank but when they're all scottish it's like man i give up i don't i mean dude there's there's a there's a scottish comedian called limmy and he has a show on Netflix called Limmy Show, and he's got this thick Glaswegian accent, and even I find it hard to understand some of some yeah. what's going on, you know. But um, but yeah, dude. I mean, there's there's a if you're interested in the kind of yeah, you know I the, the mist the mystery kind of or not really you know the cop kind of stuff. There's a yeah. really good BBC show. I think it was out last year. It's on Netflix, and it's called The Bodyguard. Oh, um, I saw that. Like that's actually like two or three years old now. Yeah. Oh that yeah, was yeah, really yeah. Good. That's that really was, good. Yeah. That was really good. Uh, my my girlfriend's been into watching a show called Life on Mars, which is basically about. Uh, it's a slightly older show, and it's about a guy. I think he's a cop, and he get he, he present day, he's in a coma, 
and the episode is him in a coma, but he's fantasizing that he's a detective in the 70s. Okay. So it's basically set in the 70s as just a regular cop show, but then, you know, then they're thinking of turning his life support machine off in the future, and then some weird stuff will happen in the 70s, and the universe collapses on itself or whatever. It's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty... Is that pretty an American crazy. show or a British show? No, it's, it's, it's a British show. It's just a, okay. it's just a, a cop show from like I don't know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. It's, it's, it's just... Awesome. I don't watch it, but she's obsessed with seven, anything to do with the seventies. So. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I will watch that. Thank you. Um, let me ask you a question. You, uh, you've made a bunch of, how many records? This is your third record. Did you learn any, sorry, is that correct or? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. So it's, 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 so I did two records and then this is a live record. So it is the third. Yeah. I, I, I call it two and a half because it's a live record, you know, but it is the third record for sure. Was it, was it a different experience making this? Like, and well, how difficult was it to mix and, and engineer? Because I'm pretty sure you did that all yourself. Well, that's the thing. So obviously uh, performing the studio albums in the studio environment, there was the opportunity to do other takes, you know, uh, but, but recording this live record, like when you're on stage, it is what it is. And I wanted to include all of that. So there was the, the sound that was captured was we had two, say the New York and Florida shows, which make up the lion's share of the record. There was two mics in the room. And then it was just my pedal board and my vocal mic for oh. talking. Uh, and then we were able to blend it and mix it and, and, and tweak it. And, and, and man, it sounds so good. We, we, we've, we've added in so much room, and the, but we've also given it quite a modern master. So it punches quite a lot. I'm just um, pulling it up. I'm, not, uh, I'm just pulling up your record. I'm not ignoring you. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, well, obviously it's, it's coming out in, on the 30th, so in a few days' time. But there's a few tracks I've put out. Um, yeah. I've put up, been putting out a few tracks like every week or a track every week up until the release. And yeah, it's, we include all the audience reaction. We include the, it, 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 the takes. Obviously, I was terrified because I knew they were being recorded. <laughs> but I, I, I'm I'm really happy with how they turned out. There will be a few moments where I miss this little harmonic here or whatever, but they have to be included to make it live. And then the mixing process, I worked on it with with Josh Clark, who did my other records. Um, and it was first of all trying to find the tone we wanted out of the sound sources that we had, and then we were able to sort of there was a lot of fiddly stuff, say bring the audience up here, you know, things like that, and and. And then, you know, there was a little bit of post-processing -process because, say, someone would cough in the middle of a song. We were able to go in and be forensic with some of that stuff. Not too That's much. That's cool, man. That you yeah, can... yeah. Just, just enough stuff that, you know, take out the stuff that you don't like and keep the stuff that you do like. But, um, but the playing itself is, is, I mean, it's just the playing, you know. It's, it's, it's pretty hard to do much to it. There was a bit of editing, but uh yeah it's pretty pretty raw um and then the track with quist that i did obviously that was i think it was two takes that we we ended up sticking together uh so we did two passes of it and and that's what you do you know you if, if you can you say okay well everything the first five minutes are great but the second three minutes of this seven minute song are much better in the second take can we mm. can we blend you things together them. and especially when it was, you know, on his part, very improvisational, he had a lot of say in, you know what, I would much rather you included that bit from there, you know. Sure. But, but we're limited because we're using these live moments and that's the nature of a live record, you know. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so very different. It was also very, it was much cheaper to make on the recording side because uh, the New York and Florida shows were being recorded for Justin Hayward's uh, PBS uh, or whatever anyway. And I was okay. just asking the audio guys to just record my set as well. Um, I was but, wondering about that because I was like, man, there was a lot of cost involved there. Yeah, it? so yeah. however, the because the takes turned out so well, um, but then obviously going and mixing a live record with Josh took pretty much about the same amount of time to... My, my relationship with my engineer, Josh, is that we typically, on my studio albums, go to his studio and record and mix one song in a day right okay so you, you do everything one at a t you you get one song at a that's and, interesting uh, well well the reason that i was doing that is because i was always on tour so i would prep a song uh, okay. i'd only be home for like a week and he totally said i've got i've got thursday free you know so that relationship had its cost but it pretty much ended up costing the same on the mixing end of the live stuff just forensically getting rid of these cops and a door closing and someone dropping some cutlery in the kitchen of the iridium you know things like that <laughs> took, took a bit of time but um 
it was it was much more enjoyable because I didn't have to be in a studio recording. It was just a concert, which is my favorite place to be. So it was nice. Well, yeah, I listened to these two tracks that are out, Encomium and uh, Somebody That I Used to Know, and they're, they're both great. I love And the Somebody That I Used to Know, that's where you had some really cool banter. I thought it was a lot Thanks, of fun. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. There's there's another track, which obviously by the time this, this is out, it will be out, and I think it just came out now as we're talking, but... Um, a John Mayer cover where at the end the audience it's how I ended the show in New York and the audience all start humming certain notes and then the top balcony are all clicking and it's this whole and then a big sexy fade out where it just leaves the audience kind of where was that show that was it was it was the same venue in New York it's not the Iridium it was called it had some weird name it was like the Society of Ethical Culture or something. It was basically a converted chapel just off Central Park so it was this almost biblical moment where at the That's end weird. of the set, I was I was fading out my pedal board, which had some loops on, and then the audience were all humming. But it was in this church, and then you had one stained glass window. Well, it wasn't stained glass, but it was like that style. And out there, you have sunset and Central Park. Oh, and it that's was just this, cool. This, this beautiful moment. And yeah, so, so I'm very fortunate that that is a memory that I've been able to capture sonically on the record. And that'll be a little bucket list thing that I can have forever. So um, yeah, in fact, Bo- there's a song called Boogie Shred, which is um, also, by the time this comes out, it'll be up on Spotify, but it's on the record. And I get the whole audience to all say the word cheeseburgers in unison in the <laughs> middle of the song. You know, there's like lots, lots of moments like that that you can't really do in the studio. <laughs> one last question i never ask about album covers but this is like a very like dystopian yet optimistic cover man that's really cool graphics how did you put that together or who, Thanks, who did you get well to put it? i mean it's a really cool story because um it's a fan a guy named Ant- anthony uh from finland he just tagged me on instagram one day and said hey i've just made this fan art for you and it was this version of me but in that digital art style that you see in the album art and I just said dude you you are so talented do you want to design my next album and um, what a cool wow and yeah so he, and, and he and he was just like yes and and I conceptualized the cover I mean because you, you got like New on- York there and you got Florida the palm trees but you're yeah. walking on this little thing on water and it's just like sort of dystopian yeah, and you got there's this- the balloon. The, the, the balloons are a Bristol thing. So my hometown is Bristol, and oh, we are we, right, we are right. yeah we are famous for. There's this hot air balloon festival every year, and it's very much part of Bristol culture. And if you zoom in, this isn't everyone loves guitar exclusive. If anyone decides <laughs> to buy, if anyone decides to buy the poster or the album, if you look really closely at one of the hot air balloons, I don't know if you'll be able to do it. Uh, but if you zoom in really closely, one of the there's a guy riding one of the yeah, hot air balloons. I'm looking that, at it. That is the Finnish children's accordion player, Seppo Hobby. Um, just some random <laughs> Finnish accordion player, which was a little a little in joke between me and Anthony, the designer. So That's really, so funny. really, really small. So if I do this on vinyl, then you, you get you get the, the Seppo Hobby. <laughs> that is awesome, man. What a cool cover. I really the colors are be you know, the the uh the way he fades the sky in there, the yeah. purple, it's just really beautiful. Well, well, what we've done with it is that every track, um, or almost every track, has its own single artwork. And it's basically all the New York ones are a night sky in New York, and all the Florida ones are an evening sky in Florida. And all of the skies are different. And then, so it creates this kind of uh, this kind of consistency. And that's kind of what the album is. It's It's... It's basically my love letter to all the times I've had in the States touring, but then also all these different places around the world kind of melding into one kind of positive experience. So That's right on, man. Yeah. That's really cool. I think the IRS should send you a love letter, Mike, based on what you just told <laughs> me. <laughs> I've, got to, I've got to send them some freaking tax money next month. Oh, uh, don't rush. You'll be, yeah. a, you'll, be, you'll be in line with a lot of people who haven't sent in their money. I wouldn't worry about that, Mike. That's one good thing about COVID. I think they're going to be benevolent about stuff like that. Let's hope so. I would hope anyway. Hey, listen, um, let me tell people where they can get the record. Uh, it's, I appreciate you talking about everything. It's always, you're so smart. Oh, man. dude, I, 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 well, I appreciate the compliment. I, I mean, I, I talk so much about all this really polarizing stuff, so I apologize for anyone no, who, hate, yeah. who, who hates me listening, but I will give them a hug. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if, if, if you're interested, so, so the album comes out on the 30th, but you can get it then and it will be released fully onto streaming services then. But 
if you want to pick up a sign, the, all the physical copies are signed because because of COVID, we're doing it very homespun. It's literally me and my mum handling everything, and I'm signing every that's, copy. That's awesome. Um, and yeah, so you can get your, bundles. Your, your mom lives near you. You, you guys uh, near you about too? about half an hour away. Yeah. Oh, that's great, man. Yeah, and um, and it's great because she's obviously she's kind of one of the at risk categories, so she's not out and about. So it's she's been really enjoying the. Uh, the project actually which is great that's uh, good thanks, man thanks man that's really but we cool. have we, yeah we have bundles with posters we have bundles with all the tabs for all the songs we have um tab books i have a tab book behind me underneath the tonewood amp all oh, speaking of the tonewood amp which is this sexy gadget that i use on uh, on my guitar whenever i'm writing or practicing there's also a coupon code on my website or an instagram bio to get 10 percent off one of those and also there are tickets to uh, my live streaming concert, which I mentioned, I'm doing November the 1st, uh, doing a, a kind of at home with, I'll, I'll probably play with the time without, maybe with some pedals for some of it as well, play some deep cuts maybe. And um, yeah, you can actually get the streaming concert ticket and the album for a, a very, very reasonable bundle, which will obviously disappear uh, on the 30th when the album comes out. So if you're interested in, in saying hi and, and listening to the record and being part of the live event, then that would be the one to go for at mikedaws.com. Plug over. And it's Dawes, <laughs> D-A-W-E-S. Um, listen, Mike yeah. is a great guy, uh, which is, I'm sure you know, it would be really cool if people could support him and check out his music at a minimum. Uh, he's a fantastic player. He's an entertaining guy, super intelligent, as you can tell. Um, he's also, it's MikeDawes.com. He's also on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. So subscribe to his YouTube channel and follow him there. Um, early bird price ends, I guess, in three days. No, it's uh, November 1st. So it's today and tomorrow from when this comes out. So I would really appreciate if you're interested to take advantage of that and check out his streaming con concert. And he's got a ton of pre-order bundles available, which is where you get- I, I, I must just say as well, something I forgot, which I must mm. give a shout out for if it's okay, is that I've been, yeah. I've been very busy on Patreon through this, this thing. And uh, I have a yeah, nice- Yeah, talk about uh, what your channel is, man. Yeah, well, just patreon.com forward slash Mike Dawes. And, and I, ha I call them the legends. So I start every post with, hey, legends, you bloody legends. Um, they're a group of just the coolest fans in the world, various tiers of, of perks and things. But everything that I release, they get early anyway. Right. They get all their credits and all the videos. I do lessons with them. You know, I'm also doing uh, every Sunday, I have like three Zoom lesson slots through my website as well, if you want to actually awesome. get on Zoom and learn guitar in person. But uh, the Patreon guys really get everything first and a bunch of extra special exclusive stuff. So if you want to subscribe to me, uh, you can do it there and then we can hang out and you can join the legends, the bloody legends. Um, <laughs> Patreon.com forward slash Mike Dawes, D-A-W-E-S. Um, anything else man you're awesome it's like you're so thorough you're like boom oh. you must be a joy to work with your managers man i can't imagine like or you're <laughs> dude i i i talk i mean you're very kind but i i talk too much to to helpfully delegate things in a single email shall we say you know i'm, I'm like hey mike do you have any do you have any ideas about this yes uh, a simple yes or no would would do yeah. fine i'm sure but I, I i appreciate it i mean it's 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 i'm missing the human interaction so it's it's nice to do these podcasts i really enjoy them and, and obviously yours is a is a really special podcast so i appreciate you Thanks, taking the man. time and also you, you i connected you with some other players who you've had on so yeah i think uh, like misha and that lot and I think, misha was on uh awesome a bunch of people man i can't uh Sweet. i can't think who i've had i'm coming up on 800 interviews <laughs> i can't Whoa, remember. lucky i remember my own name to be honest with you so uh but thanks for hey man and thank you for the compliment about the show but thanks for being a part of it and making it happen pleasure, so, pleasure. Really well i hope that. to see you again soon and uh yeah see you on the road see you in florida happens. at some point in time man um yeah. Thank you. Everybody, thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this, please share it on your social media channels. We appreciate your support. Please check out MikeDawes.com. Check out his new album, Shows and Distancing, and participate in his Patreon.com forward slash Mike Dawes. And, uh, you know, if you want to take a – if you want to – he's a really uh, – I mean, he's, he's a very uh, – sub? What is that? <laughs> Just got a sign that says sub. Just for various – subscribe. Uh, Oh, subscribe. Subscribe to everything that Mike's doing. Patreon, his website, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram, and Facebook. And uh, most important, man, especially nowadays, remember that happiness is a choice, so choose wisely. Be nice. Absolutely. Be excellent to each other, uh, yeah, as Bill man. and Ted say.
Yeah, be nice. Go play a guitar and have fun. Until next time, peace and love, everybody. I am out. Mike, thank you so much for everything, brother.